everyone and welcome to our video tutorial for this delicate as a daisy cat bandana that you can see Melba wearing here. So I hope you enjoy it. Please like, share and subscribe and we hope to see you soon. Thanks. Bye. Okay, so to make this bandana, you'll need yarn in three colors. Now I'm going for the daisy version. Um, on mine. This flower though doesn't have to be a daisy, you can make it as a different type of flower with different colours. But because I'm going daisy, I'm going yellow in the centre, white for the petals, and then I've got this orange as my contrast for the main part of the bandana. So this is going to be a very bright spring um, bandana. Um, these two here are cottons and they are a one weight, and this one here is a little bit thicker. I really like to use it as my flower center I've used it quite a few times and it um, it's got this kind of textured look to it and it gives a te texture to the center of the flower and that would be a one to two weight you can see it's kind of got texture to it so it ve it's very varies in its its weight but it works out really well for the center of these daisies I think so choose your three colors and go on the finer weight of the yarn um, otherwise you'll end up with a bandana that's just you know too big for most standard cat sizes one to two weight yarns would be ideal and you probably will be using a two to three millimeter crochet hook and I've got a two millimeter today because Melba you know Melba's quite a small cat so I don't want my bandana to turn out too large and probably what I would recommend that you do is that you work up a square here's one that I've made already you work up a square and you 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 know check the dimensions and have an idea from there how big your bandana is going to be so let's just show you the one I've made previously so we've got three squares here and then a half square here okay so you can work out how big your bandana is going to be from there and we add this this part here we add a little border as well okay so that just keep those things in mind for you know how big your squares need to be Mine, uh, did I mention, the three centimeters by three centimeters, the way mine turn out. And this, it's the same yarn. I've used a, a cotton just in this really pale blue instead of the orange. So they work out the same size. Okay, so I'm going to get a similar size bandana for Melba, who's, you know, a, a, a relatively petite cat. Um, from there, you'll need some scissors to snip your yarn, a darning needle to weave in your ends and do a little bit of hand sewing. I've got quite a fine darning needle and you'll need one probably with quite a sharp point since you're working with finer weight yarn and an optional tape measure to take a measurement from your cat's neck circumference. That's just optional. It's a tie up bandana, so it's relatively easy to size and fit. Um, Refer to the description box below for an idea of standard cat sizes. Most adult standard cats will fit anywhere in between 19 and 30 centimeters. So, you know, you can just tailor your ties to a ballpark figure. You don't need an exact measurement for for this this one, just as long as you've got plenty for that standard cat sizes. And of course, if you've got a smaller cat, a larger cat, you'll allow for that as well. Okay, so here's the bandana that I've made previously. Um, the Let's just start talking about the squares. So the squares, you'll, you will be making three of them, and then we'll be making the one half square. Now for these squares, you'll need to know how to single, uh, actually m make a magic ring first, how to single crochet for the center part. This part here, we're doing clusters of either three or four double crochets together. We'll be doing three for the first one and then all the rest will be four double crochet clusters. In the outer outer uh, part of the square, we'll be using double crochets and chains. And then you'll need to know how to slip stitch. Um, and when we get to the other the other parts here, so the, this border and the, this decorative part at the sides here, these are, these are all double crochet and chains. We'll be doing some hand sewing to sew the squares together and we'll be chaining and slip stitching or single crochet if you prefer for the ties, depending on how thick you want your ties. Okay, I've done single crochet in this one. So that's about it. Um, I think that's all the stitches, yeah. And from there it's just weaving in your ends, tidying up your project, 
and uh, making it all nice and neat. So let's get started. Okay, so to get started, so we'll start it at the center of the square, at the center of the daisy. So make a magic ring. So if you need to brush up on any of these basic techniques before you get started, then please do. So make a magic ring however you make it. And then we're going to place eight single crochets into the ring. So I don't chain here. If you want to give yourself a little bit of height, then you can. But otherwise place eight single crochets. So I use US terminology. Eight single crochets into the center of your ring. And I'll finish off doing the same and I'll see you shortly. Okay, so I've got my eight single crochets in the ring. So now we're just going to pull on the tail and close up the ring. So give a nice firm tug and close up your ring. Now you don't need to close it fully at this point. And we can always sew it shut if it doesn't shut properly. But you just, you, you just want to close it so you've got a, a, a ring there. And then we're going to find the first stitch and slip stitch into it. But we're not going to finish the slip stitch with this color. Okay, we're going to change to our white. So take your white and you'll finish your slip stitch with your white. So just place your, your yarn over your hook and pull through with your with your white okay so you've got a white loop on your hook and then just give all of your ends a little tug so make sure you've got a nice tight and secure loop there on your hook and you're going to chain three one and two and three okay so that's going to count as one of our double crochets for this first petal so you might remember from the beginning I said let me just get the the squares that I've made already. So you might have, um, so as I said at the beginning, we're using um, for the center, uh, sorry, for the petals, we're using um, double crochets four together for all of the petals except the first one. Okay, and this is because this chain counts as a double crochet. So in this first petal, working into the same stitch that you slip stitched into, you're going to do a double crochet three together. So yarn over, insert your hook into that same stitch, pull up a loop, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, this is our second double crochet, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. So you basically just half finish your double crochets. Yarn over, this is our third and final one for this first petal. Yarn over, pull through two. And then you've got four, in this case, you've got four loops on your hook and you'll yarn over and pull through all four. So that's your first petal. Chain two. So we're chaining two in between each petal. Moving along to the next stitch, and we're going to yarn over and do four, a cluster of four double crochets together. So one. And two, and three, and one more makes four. So by the end of your cluster, or by the end of your, you know, your double crochets, you will have five loops on your hook. Okay, and then you'll yarn over and pull through all five. Oops, let's do that again. So five loops on your hook, somehow I've got stuck in there, and then yarn over and pull through all five. Okay, so there you've got your first two petals. Now you're going to repeat the second petal uh, six more times. Okay, so you'll, you'll do that double crochet four together for six more petals. We're going to have a total of eight petals. In between each petal, there's a chain two. Okay, so chain two here. Now let's do one more together. So next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and our final one. 
So we have five loops on our hook by the end and then yarn over pull through all five. So go ahead and finish your, you've, from here you'll have five more petals. Remember to chain two in between each petal and I'll see you once I've done mine. Okay, so I've just finished my eighth petal there. Now remember to chain two and then you're going to slip stitch into the top of your chain. Okay, but remember we're going to change color. So pull through your loop and then we're going to finish off the slip stitch with our contrast color. So for me that's my orange. So I'm just going to do as I did before. Just pull through a loop. Now here's where you can tug again just to make sure you've got a nice secure connection in there. Tug on all of those ends and make sure you leave enough of an end that you can weave in. And you can see that my the hole in my daisy has come I'm undone so I'm going to just give that another little tug as well and now you if you haven't done it already you can snip off your ends so you can snip off your yellow end so I'll snip off that yellow end and then I'm going to snip off my white end as well just leave enough like I said for sewing plenty for sewing in weaving in and just make sure before continuing on that you've got a nice secure connection there by tugging on those ends. Okay, so we're starting off this round with a chain of five. Two, three, four, and five. Now this is our final round. This adds the square to our daisy square. Now the chain five, that counts as a double crochet plus a chain two, okay? So how we're gonna build this, actually, let me just show you so it's hopefully clear. So here's my, this was my starting point. So our chain, our chain, two, uh, our, our double crochet, so the chain, three of the chains count as a double crochet. And then the last two chains are gonna be the two chains of our, of our turning point, okay? So for this, first one well this is going to be one of our square uh, one of our points sorry one of our corners so we're going to place three double crochets so you want to on the on the right side of that chain from the previous round you want to place so in your chain two space that last chain two space that you've just done you want to play you want to do a double crochet and my hands are getting a little bit sweaty and doing this Finer work with sweaty hands is a little bit tricky, so forgive me. And then we're going to place two more double crochets in that same space. One. And one more makes two. Or makes three in total, sorry. Okay. So this is going to be, like I said, it's going to be one of our corners. Okay. So at the end, we're going to add two more double crochets in that same space and we're going to slip stitch into the third chain to give us our chain two as our corner okay and that will become a little bit clearer as we move on so we're moving on to the next chain space so the next chain two space double crochet three times in there this is one of the sides of our daisy square oops two the fluff and one more makes three okay so on the sides of the square we have three double crochets in the chain space and then in the corners we have three double crochets separated chain two and then a th another little set of three double crochets so let's do a corner here okay so one and two and three and then chain two to make our corner and then three more double crochets back in that same space one and two and three Okay, so the squares are starting to take a bit of shape. So as I said, our first 
area is going to be a corner as well. On each side we've got of our square, we've got a set of three double crochets. And then in each corner, we've got set of three, chain two, set of three. Okay, so we're now on another side. And so in the next chain space, three double crochets. One and two and three. And then we're at a corner. So we're going to repeat the corner. Three double crochets in the next chain space. Two and three. Chain two to get us around the corner. And then three more double crochets. One and two and three. Okay, so move along. Your next next chain space will be a set of three because we're on the side. The next chain space will be a corner. The third chain space will be a set of three because we'll be on the side. And then I'll meet you once I've finished that that uh, that third side there, or f actually fourth side. One, two, three, four. Of when I've finished that fourth side, the set of three double crochets, and we'll finish off this corner together. Okay, so three double crochets, the next chain space, three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets, the next chain space on your fourth side there, three double crochets, and then we'll finish off here together. Okay, so I'm round at my final, my final corner here. Now, we, because we've got the chain, we only need to add two more double crochets. Okay, so remember I said that that chain is one double crochet, so we add two more to make our our three and then we're going to slip stitch into the third chain so we've got our, our our chain two as a turn as our turning chain okay so slip stitch into your third chain and that completes your corner okay now yarn over and pull through leaving a tail so we we've finished our first square oh where are my scissors let me just forget my scissors Oh, here they are. There we go. Snip off that, that end. And then we're just going to tighten all the ends once again. So neaten up once again those connections. Tighten them all at the back here. And if you can close your ring fully, then now's the time to do so. Otherwise you can sew it closed. And then we're going to just fix up our, or neaten up really, our square using our darning needle So and weaving in the ends at the same time. Okay, so you might just have to shape it into a square a little bit. And let's, let's do, let's do one of the white ones because what you'll find where, where you can mostly see the join is here. Okay, this is where you've changed color from yellow to white so you want to try and fix that up as best you can using your using your hand sewing so I'm going to take the white so I'm going to assume that you know how to weave in an end okay I'm just going to show you I just use my tail ends to weave in but also just to neaten up so what I do is I just pull these la these the first and the last petal a little bit closer together with some hand sewing because that's the area where you'll see the you'll see the um, the join the most okay so I'm just going to go backwards and forwards a couple of times just to close up that gap between the beginning and the ending of your square so let's just close that up a little so you see that's already that's already a lot neater Okay, so then you'll just do that with all of your ends. You'll neaten up your square how you need to. Make sure you're shaping it into a into a square. Where, where am I going to go here? So work all your work all your ends into the back. Lots of fluff around today. Okay, there we go. 
So that's fine for that end. And then once you've got all your, you know, your ends woven in, you'll just snip off any of the excess. And then you'll move on to your next end. So like I said, you can use your, your end at the center to close your ring a little bit more. Well, how I do that, actually, let's do that one together. If your ring hasn't fully closed, find your starting, your starting tail end. And you'll just work your way around the stitches in the center of the ring. Okay, let's just make that. So you'll just work, move that tail out the way. So you'll just work around your ring, around the stitches. So it's a little bit fiddly work for these small squares. Work in the back there. And you'll just pull your ring together a little bit more tightly using your stitching. Once again, I've got sweaty hands, so it's hot here in Marseille today. So it's a little bit harder to work with sweaty hands. So see, so you can pull using your stitching, and that's the front side, you can pull your, your center point closer together. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that, and then just the last square, to or the last sewing to pay a little bit more attention to is this, this end tail. So you want to tidy up your tidy up your square as best you can. Okay, so making it into a square plus just evening out the stitching. So I just I just stitch that that join. I just stitch to make it a little bit neater. Okay, so go ahead. I'm going to finish off all of this off camera. And you'll repeat this three times, okay? So you want three of these, of these uh, full squares. And then we're going to move on, and I'll show you how to make just a half a square. It's kind of the same thing, except we'll just be, you know, cutting it in half. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and finish off neatening up my square. Um, I've already got my two more made, so I'll meet you... So I've got my two, this is my third one. So I'll meet you once we need to make our half a square. Okay, so finish off your ends, make your squares nice and neat, and I'll see you shortly. Okay, so there I've got my three full squares finished. So now we're going to make a, just a half a square. So it's kind of the same thing. There's just a, a little, little subtle difference to it. So take your yarn and you'll make your magic ring again. And then you'll work, because we're just doing a half, you'll work four single crochets into the ring. Working in, work four single crochets into the ring. So one, and two, and three, and four. And then pull your pull your ring closed. And this time we're going to tie off. Okay? Because we don't want to make a we don't want to make a full ring because we're just making the half version. So tie off here. So just yarn over, pull through. And then we're going to tie on again at the beginning with our white. So take your white, and the way I tie on, and if you've got a different way that you do it, then you do it your way. I just, just insert your hook into that first stitch. Place your yarn over top of your hook, so the short end at the back, and then just pull up a loop. Okay? From there we're going to... Let's just get that white tail out of the way, and I might just make it a little bit longer actually. From there we're going to chain three. Now this time this doesn't count as a double crochet, okay? 
And then in that same first stitch, we're going to do our first petal. So you'll do a, all the petals this time are four clusters, okay? Double crochet four together. So that's one and two. So we're not counting the chain this time. Three. Oh, sorry, that's two and three and four. Okay, so we don't count the chain as a double crochet in this half version. So yarn over, pull through all five loops. Chain two, and then you'll repeat that all the way around in each stitch. So you'll have four petals, and I'll meet you once you get around here. So don't tie off, okay? Wait till um, I meet you at the end of the fourth petal. Okay, so I've got my four petals there. Now we're going to chain three so we want to mirror this beginning side okay so we've chained three and then we're going to slip stitch into that last stitch okay so what that does is it gives us a gap between the first petal and the chain and the last petal in the chain to work into with our orange okay or whatever is equivalent of your orange and then we can yarn over and pull through Okay, you'll see what I mean once we finish off the orange and snip off. So you'll tie off once again with your white. Now my my ring has come open a little bit, so I'm just going to pull that pull that closed a little bit more. And then we're going to tie on with our orange. So you take your orange. And we're going to insert the hook in between the chain and that first petal, okay, to tie on. So pull up a loop and chain three, two, and three. And this time it counts as a double crochet, okay? So that's our first double crochet in that it's not really a chain space, but it's the space between the chain and the first petal. And so in that same space, we're going to place th two more. So a total of three double crochets, including the chain. Okay, moving on to the next chain space, three double crochets. One and two and three. Now this is our corner, so the next one is the two sets of three double crochets separated by a chain two. So just as you did for the full square, two and three. And chain two to get around the corner. Three double crochets in that same chain space. One and two and three. And then in the next chain space, three double crochets. One and two and three. And then in that space between the chain and that petal at the end there, we're going to place three double crochets. So essentially those the first and the last set of three double crochets is half a corner. Okay. So you can see if we didn't have that chain, um, that first and last chain, we wouldn't have a space to work into at the end there. Okay. Now you can tie, you can tie off your orange, snip off your yarn, and tighten. Pull your ends, just give them a nice little tighten. Close your, close your ring if you need to. And then of course you're going to weave in all these tail ends as well. So I'm going to take a pause here and weave in all my tail ends. And then we'll start to construct our bandana by sewing our squares together and um, adding adding this part here and the, as well as the border.
Okay, so I'll see you once I've woven in all of my ends for my half square. Okay, so there I've got my three full squares and my little half square. Okay, so just to put it in context of the bandana, so we're going to sew these ones together as well as sew in our half square. Okay, now I do this by hand sewing. You, you could slip stitch it if you wanted to. I would, you would probably want to change to a smaller hook size, but I prefer to hand sew mine together. Okay, so I'll show you what I do. I'll get you started. So just take two of the, two of the squares and I just place them back to back like this, okay? So there's a few different ways that you can join these um, squares. But, you know, I'll show you what I do, and if you want to use a different way, then absolutely go ahead. So you want, to obviously, each stitch to line up. So on these corners, what I do is I work right into those corners, into the chains, and I start there by inserting my hook into, uh, sorry, my needle into those corners. Now you want to leave enough enough length that you can sew the whole lot. Now, I just sew, so I'm gonna move on to the first stitches now. So I just sew the back loop and the front loop. Can you see that? I sew with the back loop and the front loop, like that. And then pull that together. Okay, so the make sure you're getting the corresponding stitches. So I've got the back loop of this side and the front loop of the other side. Now if you want to just work through both loops, that's also fine. This is just how I prefer to do it. I think it gives a, a neater finish. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish off just hand sewing these squares together. And then, of course, we've got to add our other square in there too so our other square will go here okay so finish off just finish off working down this side and then we're going to tie off and then we're going to tie on or, or just start with our other our other square here and then finally we're going to put this one in in between so finish off here i'll i'll meet you when and we'll start this the second join together and uh yeah so i'll meet you shortly Okay, so I've worked right down to the end there, and what I tend to do is just go all the way, it's almost slightly around the corner, but make sure that you get right down into the corner there. And then I just leave those two tail ends, I'll cut the other end, so I can do any tidying up that I might need to. So I'm in the habit of, I leave very long tail ends, especially when I'm sewing, because I hate, would hate to run out. So I just leave those two ends as they are for now. So they're not secured in yet. And then what you could do, I guess, if you've got a long enough, actually I think I've probably got a long enough tail end. This is a better idea. So sorry I didn't say that before. But you can just start again with a new a new a new length of thread. So I'm going to just continue with this tail end because I've got plenty of length there. So I'll just do exactly the same thing. So make sure you're putting them in the right place and I'll just do exactly the same thing here with this with this tail end and make sure that you're getting the corresponding stitches front loop and back loop back loop front loop and I'm going to finish off working down these two squares and I'll meet you once we get down here Okay, so I've got all of my main, or my full squares, I should say, together. And now what's left is to insert this half square. So I'm going to start with a new length. And I'll just lay that on here. And I'm going to start from this end. Obviously, I want to start on the ends, and then I can continue down the other side. So I'm just going to do the same thing here. I'm going to sew on these ends, and I haven't woven in any of the ends yet. I just want to keep them there so I can do any tidying up that I might need to. 
So I'll just start on this side. So right on the corners there. And then I'm going to continue down. So I'll meet you. Sometimes I put two, two stitches in that corner just to make sure that's nice and secure. So I'm going to work all the way down these two sides of my of my half square so put them all together and I'll see you when I get back here and actually just to show you you might have to add a few a few stitches in that center join point where they all sort of meet you might have to add a few stitches in there just to close up any hole and then continue on down down the length of the other side okay so I'll uh, yeah once again I'll finish off and I'll see you shortly Okay, I'm right at the end here, and the good thing about the hand sewing method is you can tidy up anywhere you need to with these with these ends. So any hand stitching you need to do to neaten up the joins, then you go ahead and do that. And often it's at the the corner points where you need to neaten it up. So you can, you know, flatten it out and see how it's looking, and that's looking not too bad. I might just do one more stitch across there, across that gap. So you want to you want to have your edges nice and neat. So nice and in line and you can, you know, you can work out a lot of that with your hand stitching. So I'm just going to switch over to this side and just neaten up that side as well. But that's looking that's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. So that's the center part of our bandana, bandana finished. Well, once we finish this last little bit of stitching. So I'm going to just finish up my last tidying bits and I'm going to weave in all of these tail ends. Okay, so you go ahead and do the same. Finish off, make your work look neat. And, and I'm going to, once again, I'm just going to, with these some of these tail ends, I'm just going to, see how I've got a little dip there? I'm just going to even that out and I'm going to weave in the end. So you finish off, make yours nice and neat, and then we'll meet back together and we'll start on the border. Okay, so there I've got the center part of my bandana all done. So now we're going to add the border, which actually starts here so it starts in this part here and we're going to move all the way around down around the border and we're going to stop here and then we're going to create the first side here with our tie and then we'll tie on to the other side and we'll create this side here and our tie okay so just to give you the context of where we're going next so tie on at this point here okay in this area here So I just insert my hook just as I tied on for the half for the half square. I just pull up a pull up a loop and I chain one just to secure it. Okay. Now we're going to create a little pattern moving around the border. So chain two more to make your first double crochet. Okay. And then we're going to chain one extra so we've got to actually have a chain of four to start with and then we're going to place another double crochet back in that same space so wherever you've tied on another double crochet in there Oops. Actually, I'm just going to do that again my my loop on my hook wasn't firm enough let's just pull that tighter and then back into that same space with a double crochet okay and then we're going to chain two, one and two. So I'll just give a bit more yarn. And then in the next chain space, or well, actually, it's not a chain space. Excuse me, it's a just the space between these sets of three here. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to double crochet, chain one, and then double crochet back in that same little space between the clusters of three from our squares we're going to move around doing that same thing so chain two in the next space 
double crochet oops so not in the stitch it's actually in the space space between the two chain one and then double crochet chain two now in these corners we're going to do a similar thing to what we did in the corners of the squares we're going to double crochet one chain one double crochet back in that same corner space so there is actually a chain two space there chain two and then once again complete that little v-stitch so double crochet chain one and then double crochet okay so that's how we're going to get around all of the corners so you can see we've got little v stitches in each of the spaces between this those clusters of three those sets of three okay and then when we get to a corner or we get to a join here we're going to work into the join okay so i'm just going to finish these next two and i'll meet you at the join okay and we'll work through that together Otherwise, if you feel comfortable, keep working all the way down and around, and you'll stop at the corresponding side here, okay? So you just leave the, this space open, and we'll st stop here. So I will, um, I'm just going to finish those next two off off camera, and I'll meet you at the join, and we'll do that together, and then I'll just let you um, run off on your own and finish off that border. So I'll see you soon. Okay, so I'm at the join, and I just do the same as, uh, pretty much the same as I did when I tied on. I just work into the center of the join. So double crochet, chain one, and then back into that same space. The little space you've created, chain two, and then I continue working on. Creating my V-stitches all the way around until I've finished off the border. Okay, so what you'll do is you'll continue on, you'll do the same in the corner as you did over here. You do the same in this corner, you'll work all the way up here, and then you'll work to this point here. Okay, and I'll meet you once you get around here. So actually what I should have mentioned is in these corners where the joins are, you're not working into the corner. I just wanna make that the corners, okay? You're actually working into that the actual join so hopefully I made that clear before so I'm working into my join now and chain one and then back into that same where I inserted my hook last time it's not actually a stitch or anything no no obvious space to put your hook into but you're just right in the center of your join okay and then you'll move on in the chain two and then your little V stitch in each of those spaces. So I'll continue on and I'll meet you shortly. Okay, so I'm just working my last little V stitch in the same, so the corresponding place on the other side to where we tied on. So that's my last V stitch in that join. Okay, so now we've finished our border and we're going to move on and create this little area here that leads up to the ties okay so you'll chain five three four five now that's a double crochet plus a chain two okay and then you'll turn your work around and we're going to double crochet into this first space here okay double crochet in there chain two double crochet into the next space so it's in this square space in between the v's okay so i'm going to work in here chain two and then into the next space double crochet chain two and then into the corner space a double crochet okay and then we're going to once again chain five, two, three, four, and five, and turn. Now for this next one, we're going to skip this first space, and then we're going to double crochet into the next space. Chain two, double crochet into the next space.
chain two and then we're going to double crochet into that third chain from the previous row okay so we're starting to decrease this chain your five one two three four one more five turn and then we're going to just do the same thing so yarn over double skip that first one double crochet into that next chain space it's the middle chain space in this case chain two and then double crochet into that third chain chain five one two three four and five turn skip that first chain space and double crochet straight into the third chain oops let's do that again straight into that third chain chain three this time and turn and then we're going to once again double crochet into that third chain one two three so at that last point you just chain three okay and that brings us to the point now we're going to chain for our our first tie so you will go ahead and you'll chain the amount that you need for the length that you need now on this last one I chained 70 chains okay but that will depend on obviously the size of your cat the yarn that you're using and the hook size that you're using I'm using the same I'm you know making it for Malibu again so I'm going to go ahead and chain my 70 so you do the same you chain the length that you need the number of chains that you need and I'll meet you once we've done that Okay, so I've got the length of the chain I need, which is 70 chains. Now I'm just going to chain one extra as a turning chain. And you've got the option of slip stitching or single crochet down the length of your chain. Now I did a little combination of both. So in these first three chains, I slip stitched one, two, and three but this is just optional I just like to have that little taper on the end of my ties and then in the rest of the chains I've just single crocheted okay but you can do a combination of both you can do just your slip stitch you can do just your single crochet so go ahead and choose whatever you're you're doing down the length of your chain according to the the size of the you know size of the tie that you want the width of the tie so I'm going to go ahead and finish off all my single crochets down to the base and we'll finish off here and then we're going to tie on and do repeat the same on the other side okay so I'm going to finish off my my tie here and I'll uh, I'll meet you when I'm ready to finish off here okay I'm just getting down to the end of my tie last few single crochets in there and I love how it curls up I love that <laughs> super cute okay so I'm just I've got my last single crochet here and then you'll you'll just want to slip stitch into the top of that where you pretty much where you started chaining but make sure that your tie is facing the right way okay before you slip stitch so I'm just going to slip stitch into here Oops, not there, and she into the top. Oh, where can I get in? There we go. So right into that top of where you started chaining, you slip stitch in there and then yarn over and pull through. And that's your first side done. And we're just going to repeat what we did on this side on the other side. So we'll need to tie on here on this side okay so you'll tie on you'll tie on here so right in the top of that chain on the other side so I just once again 
tie on that same way. Chain, make a chain to secure. And then a chain an extra four to make my chain of five, two, three, four. So I've got my chain of five there. Remember double crochet plus two chains. And then we're going to double crochet in that first space. So you'll just repeat what we just did. Oh, so hard when my hands are sweaty. But we'll just repeat what we just did on the other side. So double crochet, chain two, and then double crochet. So just repeat what we did on the previous side. If you need to go back, I'll put the timestamp on the um, on the video now so just go back and repeat exactly what you did on this side and re repeat and create your tie on the other side on this side as well okay so go back if you need to to remember what to do to create this and um, you know just so I can make this video a little bit shorter I won't repeat that all for you here and I will see you once I've finished off my second tie, so on this side, and we'll, uh, we'll just finish off together. I'll weave in my remaining ends, and then, yeah, like I said, we'll finish off together. So I'll see you shortly once I've created my second side and my second tie. Okay, so I've repeated the same process on the other side. So now we've just got to weave in these final tail ends so go ahead and do that and you know just in the way that you've been doing all the others and I'll uh, I'll meet you once I've done mine okay so there's my finished bandana and isn't that pretty I think it's just super pretty so I'd love to see how yours turns out so you can send along your photos to catventurous.community at gmail.com or you can tag us on social media at catventurous.crochet so uh, yeah thanks so much for watching I really appreciate it and uh, hope to see you soon thanks very much bye What are you doing? Wanna get down? Come here. Come here, Melba. Yeah. <laughs>